When American bakers David Muniz and David Leshniak first met, it was a match made in cake heaven. They've since brought their mutual love of all things home-baked over to the UK and now run a highly successful all-American style bake shop in West London. Today, they show me something rather special, a six-tier American apple stack. Wow. I mean, it, it's big, it's bold, there's plenty of textures, plenty of colours. Where did this passion for baking come from? Neither one of us were really trained. Uh, it's just something we kind of got started doing as a, a pastime. Where about you from in the States? Uh, I'm from New Jersey just outside New York, and he grew up in Mississippi. Oh, wow, there's a bit of a difference there, then. Deep South, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, culturally, the difference between the two, two states is different, the way they attack their food and the way that they bake. So when you came together to come up with this idea, was it fascinating to see how things morphed? It was a challenge to, to mix the two, because, I mean, from the South, we're always correct. So <laughs> it made it very challenging for David, I think, to incorporate any of the North in there. Yeah. They also like everything extremely sweet. Yes. The sweeter, the better. Generally, what do you think about um, British baking then? Funny enough, when we started researching where our recipes came from and the stuff that we call heritage recipes back home, a lot of them have their roots here, and it's just mm. stuff we brought over and we've just changed over the years. I think British baking is a little bit more traditional, whereas at home, you don't know where the source comes from. I find it fascinating, actually. When I was looking at recipes from people from all over the States, I looked at a recipe, which is a, a, basically a fruit cake. Yeah. I saw a little bit of British in there. Oh, yeah. I saw some French, yeah. I saw some Italian, and then I saw some German in there. So again, that's what America is. It, it's the hodgepodge, it's the melting yeah. pot of cultures and recipes. Yeah. And, and you come up with something that is unique. I think it's all fascinating. Now, I believe you're gonna, you're gonna bake uh, an apple cake. Yes, an apple stack. That's something else. Yeah. <laughs> How many people will that feed? Uh, uh, maybe uh, six. <laughs> six? Yeah. Surprisingly, you can make quite a thin slice and it will stay together, so we've gotten 16 yeah. out of that easily. Oh, yeah, at least. So this is my kitchen. Be my guest. Absolutely, thank you. Over to David and David to get the stack started. So um, just like any cake, we're going to start with creaming our, our butter and sugar. And we also have our sorghum as one of the sugars that we're going to be incorporating. What, what, what's this? It's sugar cane. But just like maple syrup is sort of just tapped from the tree and then pasteurized, have a taste of it. Wow, that's, it, it is a cross between um, black treacle, molasses, and malt extract. Yeah. It's sort of blend between all three. That's incredible. I noticed as well, um, when I was looking at recipes, they're all still in pounds and ounces. I mean, what happened in America? Have you cups. not caught up? We do cups. cups. Come on now. Yeah. What is, I mean, that, that infuriated me when I was over there. You know, I, Ooh, I, I was just saying, well done oh. with the whisk. I'll is get there a low one. speed? Am I missing something here? Just push it down towards you. Oh. There you go. Oh, that's fancy. Fancy equipment. It's American. <laughs> <laughs> What were we saying? I mean, pounds and ounces and cups, yeah. I mean, it, it infuriates me. Why can't you just go, you know, grams, kilos and liters? We tried. We tried I, I'm we a, kids, but I'm a child of um, that time when they tried to switch over and it just didn't work. It didn't stick. The Davids start their cake batter by creaming together butter and brown sugar in one bowl and mixing the dry ingredients separately. So what have you got inside there now? So what we've done, we've creamed the butter and, and our, our sugar together, and we've combined our salt, our, our rising agents, and our flour have all been combined, and then we're going to do all of our liquid together. In this case, we, we use a lot of buttermilk, mm -hmm. and it's very much like a muffin mix. You just want to yeah. do it just Just almost... so it comes together. Right. Next, David adds the sorghum to the cream, butter, and sugar. Sorghum is a classic ingredient in the dishes from the Deep South, but I've never seen it over here. The Davids import it, but you could use molasses or cane syrup instead. Next, in go the dry ingredients, and lastly, the whisked egg and buttermilk mixture. While the Davids bake, I'm surrounded by a selection of their transatlantic treats. So what's that? That's what we call our Snickers bar. So it's made with peanut butter in the batter, yeah. chocolate chips and peanuts, and then we make a caramel and sprinkle it with American salted peanuts. I thought it'd be sweeter. I mean, I've had a lot of sweet stuff, to be honest. But that's, yeah, I like that. That's delicious. While David fills the cake tins, I'm still filling my face. What's this one? That's what we call a fudge bar. So it's an oatmeal crust, top and bottom, a chocolate fudge, and then it has Smarties in it. So, it shuts me off. <laughs> Have another bite, then. <laughs> 
Enjoy. May all your whoopies collapse. <laughs> <laughs> the six separate cake layers are baked at 175 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. While I quality test a whoopie pie, David assembles the apple stack with layers of homemade apple butter. Fruit butters are sweet paste and can be made from virtually any fruit. They're really popular in American baking. Think peanut butter, just with apple or pumpkin. Would you serve it normally as a six-stack, or is that just something you decided to do? No, normally, it, classically, it's served as a six-stack. I'm looking forward to try that in a bit. Now, thank you very much for bringing all this amazing uh, baking ware to here. I mean, I love that, by the way. Great whoopie pie. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks love the colour. After seeing David and David rustle up their all-American apple stack, I want to give them a true taste of Britain. So I'll be back later with a traditional savoury treat. Oh, it smells fantastic. It's a lamb and potato suet pudding. Now it's my turn to repay the favour. With something traditionally British, a steam pudding. I'm going to make a British pudding with a heritage that stretches back to the beginning of the 17th century if not earlier. This is a lamb and kidney suet pudding with rosemary. How does that sound, guys? That sounds good. You're probably a little bit nervous about the suet. I totally understand. Actually, I'm more nervous about the kidney at this point. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Why? Don't you like it? I've never had it, so it's all, it's all going to be new. OK. Add your lamb to the flour, which will help thicken the gravy later. Put some oil in a pan, drop in the meat, and leave it to brown. Now, the whole thing about Suet. That's that suet. is suet. It's the fat from mutton or beef. It's the part that's around attached to all the waste organs. Going back 500 years, when the peasants had animals, they didn't want to waste anything. So they used to use the fat to render down the food. What happens is it seals, so it stops the juices from coming out because it's the fat itself. Okay. So we grate it down into something like that, dry it out, is it seals off the pastry. So it was a very useful way of using it in steamed pies. But you know, from a steak, the fat is where the flavor comes yeah, from. Yeah. It melts, and that's what infuses. It's the same with this. You can't use any other fat to do the same thing? You can. Butter will do a certain degree of it, but it'll also add flavor. But the point is, this has been around for so long now that it does a job, but it also imparts flavor. And I think the only way I can do that is to cook it, let you eat it, yeah. and then the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Once browned, pop the meat onto a plate. Pour some red wine into the pan and add some chopped onions, shallots and garlic. Then add stock. Do you guys like kidney? No. N no, sorry. OK. OK. That's absolutely fine. So what I'll do is I'll leave the kidney on the suet. What I'm going to replace the kidney with is potatoes. Happy with that? Love potatoes. OK. I have got some potatoes in the fridge which at this stage I'll put straight in there and I'll cook them out just for a couple more minutes and the rest of the time it'll cook inside the suet pastry itself. Now, you need to leave that to cool down and pop it in the fridge. Now, moving on to the suet crust. Over here I have my flour. Into a bowl of flour, add some baking powder to open it up and pop in the suet. Before baking powder came about, was anything else added? Eggs would have been a rising agent using the, the whipped egg. But to be honest with you, certainly in things like bread, and it, it would have made a sourdough or used a balm from a beer to rise and made a levain. And so the whole idea of rising agents when they came through is, it was new. Roughly chop some rosemary and add to the bowl with a little bit of water. Then mix it all together. OK, there's your basic suet crust pastry. So I'm just going to work this together just to form a smoother dough, rip a piece off. That one's going to be for the lid. Now, this is going to be the lining for this. This is the pot. Again, quite a traditional thing, actually. It's been rubbed with fat. Roll out your pastry, making sure it's thick enough to hold that rich, luxurious filling, and drop it inside the bowl. So I've worked it enough just to be able to line wow. the inside. Now, what we need to do is get our filling out, which we've got some in the fridge. It's been cooled. Pop all the mixture into the pudding. Oh, it smells fantastic. All those lovely juices. I'm just going to put a little disc onto the top. 
It looked good so far, guys. Is it, it worrying looks, you too much? It looks great so far. <laughs> <laughs> Took that in. How many will that serve? Probably serve a good four. Because of the growth, it's got the baking powder in. This will grow slightly in balloon as it, as it steams. So we put a slight pleat in it, and that goes over the top to allow for that extra bit of growth. Tie some string around the rim of the bowl and across the top to act as a handle. The whole thing goes into a pan with water underneath, and you need to steam this for about two hours. Let's go over here and look at this one. This one has been steaming for two hours. Let's lift it out. Imagine you have Christmas puddings done exactly the same way. Oh, oh wow. wow. And there you have it. That's more colour than I thought, given yeah. what you were saying it's brought, it. it's brought on some colour. Let's see if this guy will come out. Are you nervous? Yes. Oh. Oh, wow. wow. There you go. Wow. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit nervous then. But it's all come out in one piece, and that it's a lamb and potato suet pudding. Indulge in this British baked classic and let its flavours and richness give you a comforting hug. Gentlemen, you'll have to wait a little bit longer before we can try it. Can't wait.